During times of war, when women were expected to play secondary roles to men, these badass Filipino warriors chose to march to the forefront, engage in battle, and bravely fight for the country's independence and freedom. The episode today is about women power. This episode is dedicated to all the women of the world, especially to the Filipinas. But before anything else, uh, I would like to say thank you, uh, Sir. When boredom strikes, who asked a question about pre-colonization period episode natin, at ang question niya ay asa ng question? Tada. What was our name before the Spanish enforced the name Filipino? O, di ba? Na, natulala ako to that. <laughs> I hope you weren't bored when you were watching my episodes. But to answer your question, sir, um, when boredom strike channel, Maharlikan, yes, I would say that Maharlika would be the closest uh, answer that I can think of. From Sanskrit word Mahardika, meaning prosperous. But hey, this is just uh, my personal opinion. Listen to this. Before the Spaniards came, citizens of the country has no particular one name because the country, so to speak, is composed of several kingdoms prior to Spain colonizing us. Think of the movies like Game of Thrones or House of Dragons, which comprises of several kingdoms ruled by powerful kings. Think of that, the Pinoy ancient version. One example of which was the kingdom of Maharlika, meaning freeman or freedman, a feudal warrior class in ancient Tagalog society in Luzon. Maharlika was one amongst the several kingdoms that comprises the Philippine Islands. And that's a trivial fact. If you have something to add to this or perhaps to contest or correct me or otherwise, you are free to give your feedback at the comment section below. Alright? Now, back to our episode. Here are the top 10 Filipino heroines that changed the Philippine history. Number 1. Agueda Kahabagan Known in history as the Tagalog Joan of Arc and Generala Agueda. Agueda Kahabagan is the only officially listed woman general in both the Philippine Revolution of 1896 to 1898 and the Philippine-American War of 1899 to 1902. No less, the gallant woman was from the town of Santa Cruz, Laguna, Little is known about the early years of Agueda Kahabagan, but she is considered as a woman who feared nothing in the annals of Philippine history. Dressed in white and armed with rifle and bolo, her bravery in frequent combat against the Spanish and American forces. Historical records also show that Agueda was commissioned by General Miguel Malvar to lead troops of men armed with rifles and daggers. In October 1897, Agueda Cahabagan joined General Artemio Ricarte in a three-day attack on San Pablo Garrison in Laguna. While riding a horse with a rifle in one hand and a bolo in the other hand, she led her men and fought against the enemy, which is now known as the most renowned moment in battle. Having survived the battles against Spain, she joined again in battles against the American forces. Along with General Pio del Pilar, she fought against the Americans in southern Tagalog region. It was General del Pilar who recommended that she be bestowed the title General. Today, she is one of history's unsung heroes 
as little has been known of her whereabouts after the war. Number 2. Gabriela Silang A daughter of a peasant in Ilocos, Gabriela Silang was forced to wed a wealthy businessman who died of old age three years into their marriage. Silang's second husband was rebel leader Diego Silang who saw her not only as a wife but his equal and closest advisor. After the assassination of Diego, none of the rebels wanted to take over. Silang decided to take the matters into her own hands and lead the rebellion herself, making her the first female leader of the Philippine Revolution. The revolt became the longest sustained battles against the Spanish colonizers with Silang launching guerrilla attacks one after the other, causing the enemies fear her name. To date, Silang's name continues to stand for women's power, strength, and bravery. Our country's women-led and pro-women alliance, Gabriela, is named in her memory. In Ayala Triangle, along the corner of Ayala and Makati Avenues, stand Gabriela Silang's monument which depicts the warrior on horseback building a bolo. On the third is Teresa Magbanwa. Despite living during the Spanish colonization when women were expected to be religious and uncritically submissive, Teresa Magbanwa was always restless for action and afraid of no man. As described by her sister, Paz, Magbanwa comes from a prominent family and was able to finish her studies at exclusive girls' schools in Manila. Her husband was a wealthy farmer who owned vast lands, where Magbanwa spent most of her time practicing horseback riding and sharpening her skills with a pistol and a rifle. When revolt against Spanish colonizers broke out at her province in Iloilo, Magbanwa joined the rebel troops with her uncle and two brothers. She became the commander of the Northern Zone. Fighting in some key battles during the Spanish era, Magbanwa led her troops of rifle, sharpshooters, and bolo men to victory at the Battle of Barrio Yuting in Pilar Capiz. She continued supporting Filipino rebels against American forces and the Japanese as well, making her one of the few who fought for the country against the three of the Philippines' main colonizers. Melchora Aquino Melchora Aquino is best known as Tandang Sora, the kind-hearted woman who nursed Filipino rebels or the Katipuneros back to help during the revolution against the Spaniards. This earned her the title of Mother of the Katipunan. Her deeds were soon discovered by the Spanish authorities, leading to her capture and arrest. She was interrogated to reveal the whereabouts of the Katipunan. However, she refused to cooperate. As a result, she was deported to Guam and forced to live in exile for six years. She is quoted to have said, If I had nine lives, I would gladly give them up for my country. Coming in fifth is Trinidad Texan. In her younger years, Trinidad Texan chose to learn fencing as opposed to sewing and embroidery like other girls her age. Self-defense was important to her. At age 47, she joined the Katipunan and was the first ever Filipina to undergo the Sandugo signing her name with her own blood. Texan fought a dozen battles, the most important one being the Battle of Biak na Bato. Together with her husband, they guarded the entry into the fort of Biak na Bato and successfully prevented an attack. This gave her the title Mother of Biak na Bato. Texan was also notorious for seizing firearms and sneaking foods for the troops. When caught, she managed to subdue the guards or escape by pretending to be dead. Texan also spent her time aiding wounded Philippine soldiers, making her the mother of the Philippine Red Cross. She continued to fight for the country's freedom until the American colonization. Number 6. Josefa Lianes Escoda Josefa Lianes Escoda was the founder of the Girl Scout of the Philippines. A teacher, a social worker, and an activist, she was also a staunch advocate of women's suffrage, fighting for the Philippine women's right to vote, 
She was trained in social welfare at the New York School of Social Workers and earned a master's degree in sociology from Columbia University. During the World War II, she and her husband spent their time in aid of prisoners, including the afflicted soldiers of Bataan Death March. It has been said that the couple had also set up a coffee shop with the primary intent to gather information from the Japanese soldiers and relay this to local troops. However, they were soon found out and Skoda captured and executed. Today, Skoda is commemorated on the 1,000 peso bill and has a monument in Ilocos Norte. Number 8. Nieves Fernandez Nieves Fernandez was a teacher turned guerrilla leader. She is best known for her special technique in silently killing Japanese soldiers using her bolo. Captain Fernandez, as she was called, knew how to use her knife to attack her enemy to immediate unconsciousness resulting in a quiet death. Fernandez was skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat using the bolo and could make improvised guns using gas pipes called the Paltik or crack shot. She is famous for leading her troop of 110 rebels to victory, where they fought more than 200 Japanese soldiers using only their bolos and makeshift guns. The female captain becomes such a force to reckon with that the Japanese offered 10,000 pesos for her head. Number 7. Magdalena Leones, the only Filipina World War II veteran, was awarded the Silver Star Medal. Magdalena Leones was a Filipino spy during World War II. She was studying to become a nun and her family worked closely with American missionaries before the war. After the fall of Corregidor, she and her fellow missionaries were imprisoned where she learned to speak the Japanese language, Nihongo. After her release, she witnessed the execution of her fellow men in the hands of the Japanese. Seeing this tragedy led her to join the guerrilla forces and save her people. Leona's knowledge of Nihomo allowed her to play key roles during the war, even going as far as convincing Japanese soldiers to spare the lives of the Filipino evacuees, saying that they just came from a wedding. She became an intelligence officer for the United States Army Forces in the Philippines, Northern Luzon, or the USAFIP NIL. Called the Lioness of the Filipino Guerrilla Agent, Leones became the only Asian to be awarded the United States' third highest military decoration, the Silver Star. However, her request to be granted the Philippine equivalent, the Gold Cross, was declined. After the war, she lived quietly in the United States, keeping her war experiences a secret even from her own children. Number 9. Josefina Guerrero Josefina Guerrero is known as the leper spy during the Second World War. She contracted leprosy at the time when people used to think it was contagious. This caused her husband to flee taking with him their daughter. Devastated that time, Guerrero thought to spend her remaining years helping her fellow men and volunteered to become a spy for the Allied forces in the Philippines during the war. Because the Japanese feared her disease, Guerrero was able to dodge through inspections. Her disease worked to her advantage, as she was able to easily obtain information, deliver supplies to soldiers, and infiltrate Japanese base camps. After the war, she was awarded a Medal of Freedom by the U.S. government for saving the lives of many American soldiers. And number 10, Carmen Rosales. A popular pre-World War II Filipina actress and singer, many may not be aware of Carmen Rosales' other life as a guerrilla warrior. Born Januaria Constantino Keller, she is better known by her stage name taken after her hometown of Carmen, Rosales Province. After the Japanese forces killed her husband, a guerrilla rebel himself, Rosales decided to continue his fight and join the underground movement. She was a sharpshooter 
used a 45 caliber pistol gun and even disguised herself by wearing a mustache. Rosales' life as rebel soon depicted in a film called Guerrillera where she would also star in. Empathy and compassion for others are the key variables that contribute to the heroic behavior of our Filipino heroines. These 10 women rushed in to help others in the face of danger and adversity they do so because they genuinely care about the safety and well-being of their fellow men, their nation, and the countries 